about soy acid problem as a replacement for hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal women for own health. Um, this is the work we are going to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about bone remodeling and osteoporosis and soy benign soy acid problem as a background information. And I'm going to show you some summarized um, published data about that topic. And I'm going to make a um, um, summarized conclusion by um, Bone remodeling is a lifelong um, process where all bone is removed from skeleton. We call this as a resorption. And new bone is added. Also, we can call this as a um, bone formation. This process also controls the shaping um, or replacing bone during growth or when we got injuries to, to our bones. But if we have imbalance um, in regulating bone remodeling, um, which is the bone reduction or bone formation, um, it may desert many kinds of metabolic bone disease especially osteoporosis. So I'm going to show you several steps of um, bone remodeling just for your understanding. And this is trabeculous bone, which is buried in the middle of bone. Um, here, most of bone um, remodeling occurs. So when osteoclast, which is um, making bone rejection, um, it will locate on the lining cells and after it, like, it will activate after it activates it may be cavity on the um, surface of the cells to remove old bones from the whole body um, and then on the right side of the injury spot which is cavity it will locate some osteoblastic to make new bone um, tissue just like this. And then finally, um, it will cascade and settle the um, perfect bone. And there's locate some lining cells to protect new formed uh, cells. And this is the picture of osteoporosis. I got this some um, uh, osteoporosis foundation in America, and this is this shows normal bones has no disease. And as you see here, there's a lot of holes and not enough connection between bone tissues. So it will it makes sense to increase risk of fracture. Uh, osteoporosis is very serious, especially in women, because um, the bone loss is like really occur after a uh, menopause because of um, lack of estrogen. So many women experience up to twenty percent of their bone loss after five five years after menopause. So also osteoporosis related bone fracture can be major. Um, cause of their death um, in posterior um, postmenopausal woman, and after um, five years old of their age, their lifetime pressure is almost up, reaches up to almost forty percent. So we can say the cell process it can be a main um, reason for their mortality in um, this population. So there are several <laughs> treatments for treating osteoporosis. So we can group as a um, two generally. So one is anti resorptive So as I said before, it will um, prevent bone resorption. And there's another anabolic um, therapy also. But the pop um, most popular therapy can be hormone replacement therapy because it will um, affect the lack of um, estrogen. 
So, as you heard about this or not, the estrogen will be estrogen will serve them, or the combination of estrogen and progesterone sometimes it will serve with vitamin D also. But there's a lot of side effects about other um, therapy or hormone replacement therapy. The most um, well-known side effects should be breast cancer or, the, or other kind of cancer in their population. So, um, but they they should they have some controversial issue about to taking the therapy or not because of this um, side effect. So we can say we have to make alternative therapy for this one. So. There's a lot of studies based on the pharmaceutical or natural alternatives to hormone replacement therapy to make up those adverse effects. So based on tons of studies about this, soybean isoflavon is most promising um, candidate for alternative therapy. So I'm gonna talk about a little talk little bit about isoflavon. And isoflavon is natural substance which can be grown as flavonoid because of its chemical structure. And it has um, various physiological effects including um, anti carcinogen effect or preventing cardiovascular disease, anti oxidant effect, also relieving various of menopausal symptoms. So, and this is two category of isoflavon. One is a glycon, which is not having glycoside in its very the simplest structures of them. And other is glycoside form, but in nature we can find most mostly glycoside conjugate form inside of plant tissue, not this one, but the most active um, but active form in our body should be a glycon, not glycoside, because of the procedure of um, um, digestion or absorption in, in small intestine. So the reason why isoflavon is best alternative therapy is it um, because of its similarity of chemical structure to estrogen, which is 17 para estradiol E2. So as you see here, this is um, equal um, one group of isoflavon has very similar um, chemical structure of this. So it can be very easily bound to um, estrogen receptor, especially to estrogen receptor beta.